friends welcome to energy engineering classes i am v sushant kumar we are discussing module 5 biomass energy and green energy this is a third class in this module so in last two classes we discussed about biomass energy and in today's class we will discuss about green energy so this green energy topic contains fuel cells and uh, working operating principles and types of fuel cells and we will discuss about nuclear energy ocean energy magneto hydro dynamometer that is mhd and thermoelectric and geothermal energy and we will also discuss a concept about zero energy let us discuss about fuel cells a fuel cell is an electromechanical cell that converts the chemical energy of a fuel usually in fuel cells the chemical energy is hydrogen and oxidizing agent it is oxygen from the air and it converts that into electricity through a pair of redox reactions so there is a difference between fuel cells and the batteries that we use so most batteries in requiring a continuous source of fuel and oxygen to sustain the chemical reaction so whereas the batteries that we use the chemical energy usually comes from metals and their ions or oxides that are commonly already present in the battery except in flow batteries so this is the difference between fuel cell and a battery the first fuel cell were invented by sir william grow in 1838 but the first commercial use of fuel cell it came almost more than a century after invention of uh, hydrogen oxygen fuel cells by francis thomas bacon in 1932 the alkaline fuel cell it's also known as uh, bacon fuel cell of named after its inventor it has been used in nasa space program since mid 1960s to generate power for satellites and space capsules since then fuel cells have been used in many other applications fuel cells are used for primary and backup power for commercial industrial and residential buildings and in remote or inaccessible areas they are also used to power fuel cell vehicles including forklifts automobiles buses boats motorcycles and submarines why we need to study fuel cells fuel cells can be used in a wide range of applications including transportation material handling stationary portable and emergency backup power applications fuel cells also have several benefits over a conventional combustion based technologies are currently used in many power plants and passenger vehicles fuel cells can operate at higher efficiencies then combustion engines and convert the chemical energy in the fuel to electrical energy with efficiency up to 60% fuel cells also have lower emissions than combustion engine hydrogen fuel cells emit only water so there is no carbon dioxide emission and no air pollutants that create smog and cause health problems at the point of operation and the operation is also quite as it has very few moving parts so these are the reasons why there is lot of research going on in fuel cells before going further into the working principle and the types of fuel cells we need to understand few terms here which we already have studied in our lower class so we'll just brush up those terms so first one is anode so anode it is a electrode at which oxidation takes place so oxidation means loss of electrons for fuel cells and other galvanic cells anode is a negative terminal but for electrolytic cells where the electrolysis occurs the anode is a positive terminal so don't confuse you just have to remember that since we are studying about fuel cells anode means negative terminal so the second term is cathode so cathode the electrode at which reduction occurs so here reduction means gain of electrons 
fuel so for fuel and other galvanic cells the cathode is a positive terminal but for electrolytic cells where the electrolysis occurs cathode is a negative negative terminal the next term is electrolyte electrolyte is a substance that conducts charged ions from one electrode to the other in a fuel cell battery or electrolyzer and the last term is a catalyst a chemical substance that increases the rate of reaction without being consumed so this is the definition of the catalyst so after the reaction it can potentially be recovered from the reaction mixture and is a chemically unchanged the catalyst lowers the activation energy required allowing the reaction to proceed more quickly or at low temperatures in a fuel cell the catalyst facilitates the reaction of oxygen and hydrogen it is usually made of platinum powder very thinly coated onto the carbon papers or cloth the catalyst is rough and porous so that the maximum surface area of the platinum can be exposed to the hydrogen or oxygen the platinum coated side of catalyst faces the membrane in the fuel cell so in a upcoming slides we will see the construction of fuel cells how it works and uh, we'll also discuss different types of fuel cells now let's see how the fuel cell works so fuel cells they work like batteries but they do not run down or they don't need recharging they produce electricity and heat as long as fuel is supplied just go through the sketch the blue color the dark blue uh, color it is a electrode it is uh, negative we call it as anode and the red one it is positive we call it as a cathode and this electrode it is in between them we have electrolyte the yellow color that you see is a electrolyte and on the electrodes we also have the catalysts okay now fuel in this case if you take the example of hydrogen fuel cell hydrogen is supplied at the anode and uh, the oxygen is supplied at the cathode now on the anode side electrode we have the catalyst so these uh, catalysts they separate the hydrogen molecules into protons and electrons so both of them take a different path the electron they pass through an external uh, circuit thereby making the flow of electricity whereas the protons they pass through the electrolyte in uh, towards the uh, cathode site where they unite both of them again unite and uh, produce water and heat so this is how the fuel cell works we have different types of fuel cells i have listed the few of them first one is proton exchange membrane fuel cells or it is also called as polymer electrolyte membrane fuel cells and next uh, phosphoric acid fuel cells solid acid fuel cells alkaline fuel cells solid oxide fuel cells and last one molten carbonate fuel cells let us discuss about polymer electrolyte membrane fuel cell in detail let us discuss about proton exchange membrane fuel cells or it is also called as polymer electrolyte membrane fuel cells the important components of this polymer electrolyte membrane fuel cells are bipolar plates electrodes a catalyst polymer electrolyte membrane and uh, necessary hardware such as the uh, current collectors and gaskets so on the right side you can just see the sketch you can just go through you can pause the video and go through again we will discuss in detail about this working 
in the upcoming slides first let us discuss the function of each components and uh, from what material they are made of bipolar plates they are made of different types of materials such as metal a uh, coated metal graphite flexible graphite cc composite and uh, a carbon polymer composites next one polymer electrolyte membrane it is also called as proton exchange membrane it is a specially treated material that looks something like ordinary kitchen plastic wrap but it conducts only a positively charged ions and it blocks electrons this is very important the main function of electrolyte the polymer electrolyte membrane is the key to the fuel cell technology it must permit only the necessary ions to pass between the anode and cathode other substances passing through the electrolyte would disrupt the chemical reaction and next one a catalyst layers a layer of catalyst is added on both sides of the membrane the anode layer on one side and the cathode layer on the other side so conventional catalyst layers include nanometer sized particles of platinum so here catalyst most of the time they use platinum dispersed on a high surface area a carbon support this supported platinum catalyst is mixed with an ion conducting polymer we also call it as ionomer and it is sandwiched between the membrane and the gdn on the anode side the platinum catalyst enables hydrogen molecules to be split into proton and electrons so the hydrogen splitting is done by the catalyst and on the uh, cathode side that is on the positive electrode side the platinum catalyst enables oxygen reduction by reacting with protons generated by the anode and thereby producing the water so what is the function of catalyst uh, on the anode side that is on the negative side it splits the hydrogen and on the uh, cathode side what it does it mixes proton and electron and uh, thereby forming the water so these are the main two functions of the uh, catalyst next one gas diffusion layers uh, in short we call it as gdl the gas diffusion layers they sit outside the catalyst layer and facilitate transport of reactants into the catalyst layer and as well as it removes the product of water each gas diffusion layer is typically composed of sheet of a carbon paper in which the carbon fibers are partially coated with polytetrafluoroethylene we call it as ptfe gases diffuse rapidly through the pores in gas diffusion layers so these pores are kept open by the hydrophobic ptfe ptfe refers to polytetrafluoroethylene which prevents excessive water build up in many cases the inner surface of gas diffusion layer is coated with a thin layer of high surface area carbon mixed with ptfe or called microporous layer so this microporous layer it can help adjust the balance between water retention and water release so this is about the gas diffusion layers next one bipolar plates each individual membrane electrode assembly it produces less than 1 volt under the typical operating conditions but most applications require high voltage therefore multiple mes are usually connected in series by stacking them on top of each other to provide 
a usable output voltage each cell in the stack is sandwiched between the two bipolar plates to separate it from the neighboring cells so these plates which may be made of metal or carbon or composites they provide electrical conduction between cells as well as providing physical strength to the stack the surfaces of the plates typically they contain flow field which is a set of channels machined or stamped into the plate to allow gases to flow over the mea and uh, last is gaskets each mea in a fuel cell stack is sandwiched between two bipolar plates but gaskets must be added around the edges of mea to make a gas tight seal these gaskets are usually made of rubbery polymer so these are the different uh, components of uh, cell and uh, from what they are made of and what is its function now let us discuss how the proton electrolyte membrane fuel cell works so you can see from the sketch so the pink color the pink color that you see it is polymer electrode membrane pem polymer electrode membrane so this is the anode electrodes and uh, this part it is cathode electrodes so on the anode side as the same concept has been discussed in the previous slide working of uh, the fuel cells it is the same concept except here electrolyte it is elect we call it as polymer electrolyte membrane otherwise the working is same on the anode side hydrogen gas is passed and on the cathode side oxygen gas is passed so the the catalysts on the anode so what they do they separate they split the hydrogen into proton and electron the electron flows through the circuits thereby passing the current whereas the protons they pass through the electrolyte towards the cathode side and on the cathode side the catalyst will mix so uh, the reaction undergoes and uh, the proton mixes with the electron and uh, the water is formed and uh, this water gets collected along with water heat is also generated so this is the working principle of uh, proton exchange membrane fuel cells so we'll also discuss one more type of fuel cell so almost all the fuel cells they work under the same principle except some minor changes so this is a fuel cell we call it a phosphoric acid fuel cell so in this cell phosphoric acid is used as a non conductive electrolyte so here phosphoric acid is used as electrolyte that helps in passing positive hydrogen ions from anode to the a cathode so they commonly work between the temperature range of 150 to 200 degree celsius this high temperature will cause heat and energy loss if the heat is not removed and used properly so this heat can be used to produce steam for air conditioning systems or any other thermal energy consuming systems so using this heat in cogeneration we call it as cogeneration it can enhance the efficiency of the phosphoric acid fuel cells from 40 to 50 percent to the 80 percent so if you use the cogeneration there is a increase in efficiency almost about 30 to 40 percent the electrolyte used in a pafc is a non conductive liquid acid which forces the electrons to travel from anode to cathode through an external electrical circuit since the hydrogen ion production rate on the anode is small platinum is used as a catalyst to increase this ionization rate so what is the definition of catalyst it accelerates the rate of reaction 
so here also platinum used as the catalyst to increase the production of ions hydrogen ions so this is how the phosphoric acid fuel cell works so almost all the fuel cells they work on the main basic principles except minor changes so here i have discussed two fuel cells you can uh, just go through and uh, study about other fuel cells on your own let's go through the advantages and disadvantages let's first discuss the advantages so energy is continuously available it is more reliable unlike uh, batteries there is no extension or no recharge as long as you supply the fuel we get the a uh, current it has a good potential to meet the power requirements and uh, capital cost is low in comparison to nuclear and thermal power plants and coming down to the disadvantages the components of plants are liable to be uh, corroded and uh, gases effluents create nuisance at the site for the workers and also it creates thermal pollution to the environment and uh, there is also likely that ground not what uh, ground water is likely to be polluted from the gaseous effluents so these are the advantages and disadvantages of fuel cells let's go to the next concept in uh, green energy that is uh, geothermal energy so geothermal is derived from the greek word meaning heat of the earth so here what we do is we use the heat available under the earth to generate the electricity so usually the temperature as we go deep it is very high so we identify the sites and where the rocks are present we make we drill suppose this is a rock bed we drill here and uh, we pass the water through here the water will pass through over the rocks and it's get it gets converted into the steam so this steam it is passed through the heat exchanger where the heat from the steam it is passed to the refrigerant and uh, thereby this low boiling point refrigerant it gets converted into vapor state so this refrigerant is used to run the a turbine so this is how the geothermal power plant works the next topic in green energy is nuclear energy nuclear power plants use nuclear fuels like uranium and plutonium to produce energy by nuclear reaction in such fuels when the nuclei of atoms are split by fast moving neutrons the binding energy is released as heat energy the heat energy released is so enormous that 1 kg of uranium it can release energy equivalent to 4500 tons of high grade coal so this heat energy is used to raise the steam which in turn is used to run steam turbine connected to the generators as a conventional steam power plant so here we prefer uh, we use nuclear fusion reaction there are two types of reactions nuclear fusion reaction and nuclear fusion reaction i'll uh, just give you an idea about what is nuclear fusion reaction so when a slow neutron when it hits the atom for example you take uranium uh, 236 two uh, products are released one is krypton and second one barium and along with that about 2.5 fast moving neutrons are released so there is a moderator so which reduces the speed of this neutrons and uh, along with that the energy is also released and further these neutrons are again bombarded further with the nuclei of uranium and uh, the chain reaction continues and whatever heat that is released it is used to evaporate the water into steam and that steam is used to generate the power so this is how the nuclear power plants work the next topic in green energy is 
ocean thermal energy conversion in short it is called as otec otec ocean thermal energy conversion so here on the sunny day as we go deep into the ocean there is a temperature difference on the surface the temperature will be high and uh, as we go down the temperature of ocean water goes on decreasing so we use the difference of this temperature to generate the power and these kinds of power plants we call it as otec plants ocean thermal energy conversion power plants there are two types here one is the open cycle and second one is the closed cycle so first we'll see the how the open cycle otec plant works you can just go through the sketch here so there is a ocean water at the top the we have warm water and uh, as we go down there is a cold water so now warm water is taken into the power plant and uh, it is uh, converted into steam and uh, that steam is passed over the turbine and once that steam comes out of the turbine it is condensed and it is discharged to the sea so we here we are directly using the sea water to run the uh, turbine and generate the electricity so this type of plant we call it as open cycle plants second one is closed cycle in case of closed cycle we don't use the sea water directly to generate the electricity so instead we have a liquid refrigerant so heat from the sea water is taken to evaporate the liquid refrigerant and that vapor high pressure vapor is used to run the turbine and once the vapor refrigerant comes out and it is cooled in the condenser you can just go through the sketch so here this is uh, you can call it as heat exchanger so warm water from the ocean is taken so the heat from the warm water is transferred to the liquid refrigerant the liquid refrigerant changes its phase from liquid to vapor so this high pressure vapor liquid refrigerant it transferred to the a turbine generating the power the vapor refrigerant that comes out again we take cold water from the deep ocean and heat is transferred from the vapor refrigerant to the cold water and uh, again the phase change takes place and this cycle continues so here the ocean water does not uh, come in contact directly with the turbine so we have two circuits this refrigerant is one circuit and uh, the ocean water is second circuit so that's why we call it as closed cycle otec power plant topic in green energy is mhd magneto hydrodynamics so it is the study of magnetic properties and behavior of electrically conducting fluids examples of such magneto fluids include plasmas liquid metals salt water and electrolytes the word magneto hydrodynamics is derived from magneto meaning magnetic field hydro meaning water and dynamics meaning movement the field of mhd was initiated by hannes alfven for which he received the nobel prize in physics in 1970 the fundamental concept behind mhd that is magneto hydrodynamics is that magnetic fields can induce currents in a moving conductive fluid which in turn polarizes the fluid and reciprocally changes the magnetic field itself so this is about mhd next is thermoelectric generator in short we call it as teg a thermoelectric generator it is also Uh, called by the name Seebeck generator is a solid state device that converts heat flux directly into electrical energy through a phenomenon uh, called as Seebeck effect it is a form of thermoelectric effect so thermoelectric generators function like heat engines 
but are less bulky and have no moving parts but however thermoelectric generators are typically more expensive and less efficient so these uh, generator thermoelectric generators they could be used in power plants to convert waste heat into additional electrical power and uh, in automobiles as a automotive thermoelectric generators we call it as atgs to increase the fuel efficiency so radio isotope thermoelectric generators use radio isotopes to generate the required heat difference to power the space probes last topic in this green energy topic is zero energy concept the state that exists when the amount of energy provided by one site renewable energy sources is equal to or equivalent to the amount of energy used it helps to conceptualize net zero energy in the context of a building like your home or office if your home or office is working at a net zero energy that would mean that it is producing as much or more energy as it is using a net energy building means that the total amount of energy used by the building on an annual basis is equal to or less than the amount of renewable energy energy created by sources that are naturally replenishable such as wind rain or solar created on site a net zero building is typically connected to the grid and can sell excess power as well as buy additional power during the times of high energy demand however over the course of the entire year this building will be net zero because it cleanly produces as much energy as it consumes so the overall meaning of this is if you consider a home or building if it is generating electricity using the renewable energy and uh, the same energy is utilized in the home or building then that we call it as zero energy building and this concept we call it as zero energy concept we are at the end of today's video class so the topics discussed in today's class are we discussed about fuel cells working and uh, different types of fuel cells we discussed about geothermal energy nuclear energy and we also discussed about ocean thermal energy conversion system open cycle and closed cycle then we understood what is uh, magnetic hydrodynamics and we also discussed about uh, how the thermoelectric generators work and uh, at last we discussed what is zero energy concept these are the topics that we covered in this video class for any doubts contact me and thank you for watching the video this is the end of module 5